Okay, welcome to Exploration Places live feed. I am Dr. Amy Siri. I am a pediatrician with Ascension Via Christi, and I've been here in our community practicing as a pediatrician for almost nine years now. I'm really excited. This is my first Facebook Live presentation, and I am here today to answer the kinds of questions you guys might have about coronavirus and COVID-19 illness. These are really meant for kids to get a chance to get some questions out there and ask it in a way that uh, they can get an answer that maybe is a little more tailored to them. If you can do us a favor and leave comments on our Facebook feed, that's how we'll be able to pick up on the questions that you guys are submitting. First, let me tell you a little bit about the virus though. So we've been calling it the novel coronavirus. That's because novel means brand new. This is a new mutated form of this virus that now exists in nature. We call it corona because of how it looks. It's a ball with these funny little knobs on it that if you were to look at it kind of crosswise, it looks kind of like a crown. And the Spanish word for crown is corona, so we call it coronavirus. There's a whole family of these. There's about seven of them out there. About four of them aren't so bad. I mean, they cause the common cold and can be really annoying. It can be you the runny nose, sometimes a cough, just making you feel kind of blah for a while. And unfortunately, the other guys, they're kind of nasty. The world, unfortunately, has dealt with some of the nastier coronaviruses before. Maybe you've heard of MERS or SARS, but this one is brand new. And none of us have seen it before, so unfortunately, all of our immune systems have to get used to it all at the same time. This can be a little bit worrisome, though, because some of us have better immune systems than others. Sometimes we have other pre-existing conditions like diabetes or asthma that might put us a little more risk that if we get exposed to this virus that it can make us sicker compared to other people. Sometimes just being older means your immune system doesn't quite work as well. So that's why there's some basic recommendations for everyone right here right now that we can do to help prevent the spread of this virus. Of course, you're tired of hearing about this, but it matters. Washing your hands. You've got to be really good. You can't just scrub this way. This is full on wash and you got to get all those surfaces, including your thumbs and your fingertips. If you can wash really, really well, that's half the battle. But we also need everyone to help prevent some of this spread. It'd be really great if you could learn that when you have to cough or sneeze to do it into your elbow or shoulder. If you have trouble remembering, just dab. However, there's more that we can do. We've got to make sure that we limit our contact to other people in our community, which can be so hard. Right now, we all just want to have our play dates and sleepovers and get togethers. But really, if we can minimize the number of people that we come within six feet of each and every day for the next little while, that means we are helping to beat that virus. We're using our own special superpowers to make sure the virus goes no further than us. That we're not accidentally exposing some of those people that I've talked about that might have a weaker immune system. But let's get down into some of the questions and details that you guys might have. Do we have any questions yet? Well, let's see. Um, so, you know, my birthday is in a month. Yeah. Can I have a sleepover with one or two of my friends? That's a great question. So can you have a sleepover with one or two of your friends or maybe just a play date? You just want to see your best friend so badly. I get it. I really miss my friends right now big time too. But like I said, you can't come within six feet of each other and that's so hard to pull off when all you wanna do is play. So right now, the American Academy of Pediatrics has strongly recommended no play dates, no sleepovers, no close contact. So I think it'd be fun to do drive-bys and wave to each other. It might be fun to do Facebook Live or FaceTime. There's ways that we can communicate with each other. There's even online gaming. Mom said it was a bad thing before, but now, hey, it might not be such a horrible thing because it allows you to play with your friends as long as you're limiting the amount of screen time you engage in each day. But I mean it. I really know that this is tough. I really feel it with you guys, but we really can't have those kinds of exposures. If we keep cross-contaminating back and forth and we accidentally keep spreading it to other people in our community, the virus might win, and we don't want that. Um. So Scarlett would like to know, what are the symptoms? Hi, Scarlett. So some of the different symptoms that coronavirus can give you might start out as a runny nose, sore throat. Sometimes you'll get a fever. A fever is defined as 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. 
And that's if you check using a good oral so that it might be near that threshold and maybe you need to do an oral check. Beyond fever, then you might start developing cough. And if you ever have any trouble breathing, that's when I, as a doctor, want to know about it. If you're having some of those other precursor symptoms where it's just kind of like a really bad cold, don't come see us in the office. Don't go out in the community and expose others. That's when you need to stay at home and you need to recover and recuperate. Um, Christine asks, do you think if we do everything right, this should end in two weeks? Oh, hi, Christine. So if we do everything right, unfortunately, no, this will not be over in two weeks, but it does mean that we could have helped a lot of people and prevented a lot of folks from getting really, really sick. So you can actually kind of help save lives by following these rules as horribly tough as they are. Real quick, giving you guys a little more time to put some more comments and questions out there. There's a couple misconceptions. There's all kinds of funny things that you can see get passed around on social media or different um, ways of communicating. And one of the things, one of my buddies even got tricked by this yesterday, is putting a lot of Vicks vapor rub up in your nose. That's not going to stop the virus from getting in your system. Unfortunately, I really wish it was that simple. If it was, all the doctors and nurses, we would be recommending it, but it doesn't work. And in fact, in fact, I don't recommend putting any kind of like oily substance in your nose for long term. Only briefly if you've had a little bit of trouble, like with a nose flea. But then use Vaseline, not Vicks Vapor Rub. That would kind of burn. <laughs> great. Um, does it hurt to get tested? Ah, great question. Does it hurt to get tested? No, no needles, no poking involved. What they are going to do is it's kind of like a really long skinny Q-tip and they're going to put it in your nose swirl it around a little bit so it's going to tickle horribly but it's not going to hurt once they complete that test it can take about five days currently for us to get a result if you have a risk factor that means that you qualify for testing here in the state of kansas while that test is running do not leave your house that is an absolute five days at home no running errands definitely no like chances of running into someone else. You've got to stay inside your four walls during that time, as hard as it may be. That's really important. One of the ways that other people have not complied is after they test, they go out and they go swimming, working out at the gym, running to grocery stores, and they're spreading the virus. They're losing their chance to make a difference. Um, but can I go outside and play? If you've not actively been tested, you're just one of those helping us by staying at home, yes, Let's go outside and let's play a bunch. Everyone should be getting 30 minutes up to an hour of good, vigorous physical activity every day. I love taking my dog, Indy, for very long walks, and she's really excited for all the extra attention that she's getting. I also spend some time doing a little bit of aerobic activity and some strength training. I recommend everyone schedule a little bit of workout time or play time into every day. One of the other misconceptions that exists out there is if you drink lots of really warm liquids, that it will kill the virus. Again, that's not how it works. If it was that simple, we'd already be doing it. How this virus spreads is if it gets onto your hands and then your hands touch your face, like your eye or your nose or your mouth, now the virus will enter into your system. And unfortunately, that's how the infection will start to really, really spread. If you drink warm liquids, yes, you have a warm tummy and that's really nice, but it doesn't do anything to the virus. So again, very important, good hand washing and not touching your face. Other questions? Um, Jude is asking, will eating vitamins help to keep the virus away? Good question, Judah. So does eating uh, or taking vitamins help keep the virus away? Unfortunately, no. There are no medicines, no treatments, nothing to be super preventative other than trying to be as healthy as you can be. If you want to take vitamins, it's not contraindicated, but there's no proof that it's going to be helpful yet. I do recommend everyone stay up to date on their vaccines. If you're sick with something else, like the influenza, for which there is a shot in a vaccine, if you get sick with that and then get infected with coronavirus at the same time, that could be a really nasty combination. So again, Get your vaccines and if you have any normal medicines that you should be taking on a regular basis making sure you don't run out of those you stay in prime health other questions um we, we kind of answered this before but in case people are coming in later to the conversation 
Um, Haley and Brent would like to know if they can have play dates with healthy friends. Ah, hi, Haley and Brent. Uh, if you're joining us a little bit late, uh, other people might have the same question too about play dates and sleepovers. Again, the recommendation is not to have any. Unfortunately, people can look healthy even up to two weeks while carrying the virus. So that means just because someone looks okay doesn't necessarily mean they're not infected. And we really need to be very vigilant and careful that we're not spreading this back and forth. The only way to do that is to avoid each other by minimum of six feet. That is almost impossible to do when you're having a play date. And if we don't maintain that six feet, then it doesn't do any good and the virus starts winning. What are some good websites where you can get yeah. valid information? So it is important that anytime we do have these kinds of questions that we do verify them with people who know their stuff. I highly recommend the CDC, the WHO, Sedgwick County Health Department, and KDHE websites. They're gonna give you the most up-to-date information with the most accurate uh, information that's out there. If you're just passing on stuff that you saw on Facebook or TikTok or elsewhere, there's a good chance it might be false. Just like the virus, let's not spread it. Any other questions? Um, can I kiss my little brother or hug my little sister? Those are also great questions. So unfortunately, if you have a child in your household who's less than three months old, they are especially susceptible to different kinds of infections and not having a very good immune system to fight them off. If you have a child who's less than three months old, I highly recommend limiting physical contact with other children at this time. But let's say you're seven years old and you wanna give your five-year-old brother a hug, I say go for it. We could all do with a lot of extra hugs right now. But make sure you're giving a good clean hug with good washed hands. Also, again, as a reminder, if you need to cough or sneeze, let's do it in our elbow, guys. Well, thank you again so much. I was really excited to get to do this live session with you guys from Exploration Place. Keep checking back on our Facebook page each day to find fun STEM activities that you guys can do at home. Thanks again for being part of this.